Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And it's time once again. To recommend things. Vince, what do you recommend? I'm recommending my new favorite toys. <laughs> They're kind of my new favorite toys too. I really wish I had these. They're great. Oh my god, I'm so freaked out. I picked these up from Craigslist today, believe it or not. And uh, I found somebody in the Casey area that was selling these. And uh, he said, yeah, I bought two and I don't need two of each of these things. So uh, I'm just kind of cleaning house. So I got a really good deal on him, and the guy was terrifically nice. I chatted with him for probably about 45 minutes to an hour, and this is what I picked up today. Heck yeah, man. Those are really cool. They're so pretty. Now, if you guys want to see these things in more detail, you can go to maddiecollector.com and, and uh, look for... <laughs> and look at uh, the characters in more detail. But, uh, I mean, some of the highlights of these things that I love, first of all, the boxing is really pretty. The characters stand in the box as you would expect. Never heard so, boxing described as pretty. It's very oh, pretty. Oh, you mean the boxes. <laughs> boxing is a terrifically pretty sport. It's really more of a science than a sport. That's what they would tell me. I think it's more of a skill than a science because you're not studying like how the world works, you're fighting. Anyway, so the boxes are really pretty, and of course, as you can see, they line up. So, uh, yeah, and these are this is Ghostbusters 2. So there's four from uh, MaddieCollector.com that you could have once upon a time purchased. And uh, so there's these four from Ghostbusters 2, and then there's, of course, four from Ghostbusters 1. Same guys, only they're in their Ghostbusters 1 costumes. And uh, so, I don't know how different Egon and Peter are from their Ghostbusters 1 equivalents, because on the shoulder, these guys have the Ghostbusters 2 insignia. But uh, that might be it. It might be that and the color of a couple of their, their things. I'm not sure. But these guys are, of course, completely different because they are in their slime blower outfits. Now, I'm going to set these down. Actually, I'm going to turn them around real quick for you. Oh, and then I no longer get to do my impression of Mr. Wilson from Hope and Improvement. Oh, sure you can. I'm turning it around. Oh, cool. So... One of the cool things about these boxes is that uh, they have those art pieces from the back. I believe it's one of the fettuccines. That, uh, that sounds tasty. It's a line from the movie. Oh, well. <laughs> so, so I'm going to set them down. I don't know that one as well. There you go. <laughs> but uh, nobody knows Ghostbusters 2 as well as Ghostbusters 1. It's just like not as good. out of space now. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, what's one of the interesting things about those, I don't know about the uh, the Ghostbusters 1 ones, I don't have those, but uh, these guys, you can take the name badge off of their costumes, switch out their costumes, so you can still, ha you could have uh, Spangler or uh, or Peter in the slime blower outfits, and of course the other two in the other outfits. So That's neat. I think that's a neat thing. And of course, you take them out of the box, you, st you hit some buttons and their packs light up, it's, it's fascinating. And uh, these these characters are these things look so they don't look as good as Hot Toys figures do. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But uh, they're also pro they probably also weren't originally as expensive as Hot Toys. Yeah, I mean, like you know, you go and I have one Hot Toys figure. Yeah, I have one Hot Toys figure. I have three sh sideshows, and I have uh, these four from Maddie Collector. And uh, so the Hot Toys figures look nearly identical. Like, I've seen pictures of Hot Toys toys that I did not realize that were not of the actor themselves. Yeah, they look so good. It's And my two face is just exactly like that. Now, uh, these guys, uh, you can tell they're figures. They, yeah. don't, they don't look like the actors 100%. It's not photorealistic, but the, the sculpt is good, and uh, their hairlines are good. They, they look like the actors. Now, sometimes you'll see a toy that you're like, oh, that guy looks like... Batman, I guess. Yeah. Ish. Well, that guy looks like Superman because he has the S. It really doesn't look like Henry Cavill. But uh, these oh, things. Oh man, and the, and the and the main toy. Did you see the main figures from Man of Steel? They were embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. They. Not so good. They look nearly nothing like their counterparts. But these guys, I like. And of course, uh, there are a bunch of six-inch figures that came out from Maddie Collector, which I have oh, really cool. a good number of those. I didn't know that's what those were from. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're all from the same line. Uh, Mattel pretty much has the corner on uh, doing these these uh, Ghostbusters figures. Ghostbusters, Masters of the Universe, and then the, that one DC line that they do, which I forget what it's called. But I'll figure it out. If you guys want to know what it is right now, go to MaddieCollector.com, because when I find out, I'm going to assume you've already looked. <laughs> so, so, uh, so yeah, I love these guys. I think they're great. Actually, I was so just freaking jazzed 
when uh, when I went and picked these things up, I ended up talking to this guy for a while because he's like, oh, this guy has a similar interest to me. And uh, he brings out the wand from the Ghostbusters, not to sell, just to show. And uh, what's cool about it is you can turn it on segmentally like they do in the, sh in the movies. Oh, really? So you can go switch, and then the gauge comes on, switch, and then this thing comes on, switch, and then this thing comes on, and then switch, and then you're fully powered up. And uh, what's fun is that the, the end of the wand pops out like you're cocking it, sort of. Like when you flip one switch, it just moves out. It lights up, it vibrates, it makes the noises, it makes... Uh, and I was standing there like a little boy while this person showing me this stuff. I'm going, oh my god, you're so cool. <laughs> How do you get one of those? Oh, he bought it. Wow. He, he, I think he bought it when it came out. Well, I guess what I mean is how hard is it to get that now? Uh, now they are not cheap. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, every so often they'll re-release the things. Like a PKE meter at one point was super expensive, but they just re-released that. And that was like 70 bucks. And uh, the goggles, I think there's only, I could be wrong about this, but I think there's only four costume pieces available. They have the goggles. They have the wand. They have the, uh, the trap. And they have the PKE meter. Uh, I don't know how much the, the wand and the PKE meter, or the wand and the trap are originally. Now they're going for well over a few hundred bucks. So it's, if you wanted them, you could probably pick them all up for, I don't know, a thousand bucks, a thousand five hundred, two thousand, depending on, depending on what the market's like at the time. Because of course, our, our big source for getting these things at this point is eBay. Right. Unless they re-release them, which they did, uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, just re-release the goggles. And I think you can probably get that for about 150 by itself. So, uh, so how much with Ghostbusters are you a completist? Like, are you trying to get your hands on all this stuff? Or? Yeah, which, just much to the waiting. chagrin of my wife. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> which, uh, that being said, no, she's terrifically fine with it. Uh, she she knows I like it a lot, and there's there's not a lot of things that I freak out over. Most everything, I go, that was all right. But, uh, well, you've only started really, really heavily collecting Ghostbusters in the last few years, right? You know, I didn't I mean, realize these things existed in the last of couple it, of years. But you just didn't know about it, yeah. I mean, I knew you could get all the knickknacks, and I knew there was a million toys out there released from Kenner. Right. And uh, then I found these Maddie toys, and I went, these are the movies. This yeah, is not the I real Ghostbusters. No idea these are the actual Ghostbusters. That much in the way of memorabilia. And uh, when you, you go to Maddie Collector, you can find well, nearly most of it in this little archive that they have. But, uh, oh my goodness, there's... I think there's five Rays. I think they made the most out of all the figures they made was Ray. But, uh, and I'm nearly complete on having all the Rays. But, uh, <laughs> I know that sounds weird. I, I have fact, to get all the Rays. Not including these. I got a little Christmas money and I got a terrific deal on these. Like uh, uh, these guys, well, we're not going to get into it for how much those guys are. But uh, normally you can find these things for about. 22, not including shipping when they come out from Maddie Collector. But uh, when you find them on eBay, it ranges, depending on what you find, between 20 and like 100. So it just depends on what, where you go, which, which dealer you go to, and what you happen to find. But uh, so this, this Christmas, I picked up four of the six inch Ghostbusters. Three of them are Ray. <laughs> so I am a Dan Aykroyd fan. It is what it is. But uh, I just thought that was really funny. Three of them were Ray. Uh, I already had two two Rays. I already had two Rays. Deal with it. <laughs> but, but I don't have any Winstons yet, and I bought three Rays. That's really funny. Because Winston's one of the harder ones to get, actually. He's one of the pricier ones. Right. They only released two of them, so. And, uh, yeah, yeah, indeed. So that's what I'm recommending today. Those my, are really boss, man. My new favorite toys. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Uh, today I'm gonna recommend something entirely different. Uh, I, I, I don't. I, I, this is. I decided since you had uh, really big, cool, awesome things to show, I would just talk about something that I don't have on my person. Uh, today I'm gonna recommend a TV show I've been watching on Netflix. Uh, another one of those. Um, I think last time I did one of these, uh, it was Breaking Bad. Uh, today I'm going to recommend Dexter, uh, which is probably a show. Again, oh, like I said, I like that cartoon with the laboratory and everything. And yeah, the Sister Dee Dee. Yeah, no, th this is this is a little bit more uh, adult than that. Oh, so they started killing Dee Dee, huh? Hmm. N no, they started killing. <laughs> 
a lot of other people though. Um, and there's like blood and things. Anyway, so um, <laughs> so I, I for this is one of those things where I figure a lot of the people watching this have probably seen this show. But for folks that haven't, I'll describe it for you and tell you what I thought of it um, or what what I what I think of it. I'm not done with it. Um, and I did this with Breaking Bad too. I was like halfway through one when I when I recommended it. Um, Dexter, I just finished season three and I'm starting four. Um, so uh, if you don't if you haven't seen it and you don't know very much about it, you probably at least know that it's a show on Showtime that's a that's this um, really uh, adult thing about a um, serial killer that kills other serial killers, and um, it's uh, it's a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Um, I, I expected I, because because I, I, the true. only thing I ever heard people say about Dexter was, um, oh man, it's so like um, it, it's. It's so like envelope pushing and shocking. It's it's a story where the protagonist is a serial killer. So I was expecting like episode after episode of por of like Henry Porch of a serial killer. Like that that's what that's kind of what I figured it would be like. You know, um, I figured it would be like, that would have been rough. I figured it'd be like the character's really interesting, but he's not sympath he's not really sympathetic. Like he's not really likable, but he's sympathetic. You know what I mean? We're mm -hmm. like you could understand how he got to where he got, and so that made it worth watching. And that's kind of what um, Breaking Bad was. You know what I mean? Like Walter White's not a person that you would want to be like. That's a cautionary tale kind of thing. Right. This isn't that, and I really thought it would be. Um, this is weirdly kind of a standard narrative about a character that you both like, or that I both come to like and appreciate and sympathize with, who kills people... Yeah. And I think that's absolutely fascinating. And not just that he kills people, that he is, he is actually a serial killer. There's a lot of stuff about the ritual of serial killing. Um, and they make a really good point of it, because at first, when, when, I, when, I, when I watched the first couple episodes and went, okay, so the premise is, it's a serial killer who kills other serial killers, so he has a code. He can't kill people who didn't kill other people. And it's also not just he has... It's, it's not like, you know, if he has a pretty reasonable suspicion. No, he's got to, like, have definite proof. Like, yeah. He goes. He goes within the letter of the law as as far as what kind of proof you would need in a courtroom to be sure that somebody killed somebody else. But then he takes matters into his own hands um, and and goes and kills them. So at first I was thinking that it would be too much like The Punisher or something. That it would be like, okay, well, um, if the guy just kills people he thinks deserves it, he's a vigilante, not a serial killer. But it's because he's got this. It's because he's got this need. It's because he has this um, this like uh, obsession with with killing, and it's this primal thing. Um, I really like what they do in season two, which so far uh, is definitely the best season of that show, um, in, in in my opinion. Um, they do this really interesting thing about about uh, early to midway through season two, where he's going to rehab um, because his girlfriend thinks that he is um, addicted to heroin. Win. And yeah. it, I think that's really interesting. I do too. Uh, I think be, it's funny because yeah, because he is a man he, dealing with a disease. He's, he's right? dealing with when he's dealing with an addiction. He's dealing with 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 something that's very akin to substance abuse, but it's an action he has to do. It, it, it's a little closer to like to like a sexual addiction or something like that than it than it is like or a gambling substance or thing. Something. Yeah, but he needs to see that blood. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's it's something that um like like uh. That, that totally controls him, and um, and that's why he's he's a serial killer and not just straight up a vigilante. Um, but what what I what I find really fascinating about the whole thing is that um, it starts getting into this territory of does it really matter why he's killing? Isn't he making the world a better place by taking these people out of the world who are making it so much worse? And c couldn't he be considered by definition a hero? And um, until he kills, in, until he were to on purpose kill someone in that ritual way that that uh, that didn't quote unquote deserve it, um, couldn't we potentially see this guy as a hero? And he starts asking himself those questions. He starts wondering about it because he starts seeing the ways in which he's making other people's lives better by the thing that he does. Um, and so, because the thing is, he has this moral code. 
built in him um, by his father, and that, that's that's one of the things that immediately hooked me. This idea that um, that uh, this is a person who didn't come up with this all on his own. He would have been probably a regular serial killer if it hadn't been for the fact that his um, because of a traumatic thing that happened to him when he was when he was a kid that I won't get into because it's really interesting to find out what what all that was, and they make you wait for it, and then when you finally find out what it is, it's quite quite interesting. Um, so I, I won't give it away, but um, but uh, I will I will. I uh, say because because we get this very early that um, his his father uh, is w was a because he's dead now his father was a police officer um, who adopted Dexter and um, as Dexter's growing up he's realizing that he that uh, his father Harry realizes that he has these um, these urges that he can't control to to kill things and that he doesn't process emotion like a normal person and so uh, the only way he's able to um, function is to a pretend like he has emotions like normal people does. He learns how to fake it, um, and th the guy is brilliant at playing not being able to have real emotion but pretending like he does. It's it's so layered, just fantastic. But I, the second I thing, agree. but the second thing is he. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, so he does. So he does that. But, this, but, the, but the second thing is, he has to satiate that desire for um, for ritual killing. And so um, his father teaches him how to um, how to uh, not only um, just uh, kill, but not, not only how to pretend that, but also um, he teaches him how to kill and not get caught. And uh, and to, to take out uh, you know you know bad guys and use this as a positive thing outside of the system of a law. God, that's really interesting. Um, I've never I've never seen anything like this. I th I, I, I think I think it's fantastic. Um, and like I said, th the thing I love the most about it is I should not like this guy, but I do. Right. You know, I can't help it. Like, like I, I know I'm comparing this to Breaking Bad a lot. With Walter White, he's a character that I can't help but be enthralled with and interested in, but I don't want to be like him. I don't mean to say I want to be like Dexter. But at the same time, there is a little bit of ambiguity of is is he is he a hero or is he a you know you know is he a monster? Yeah. Is you know, this I, truly immoral? But boy, I yeah, love that. Yeah, yeah, it is. But then at the same time, it's like, well, what's the alternative here? Like, you know, either he kills himself and takes himself out, um, gets caught and and gets on death row or whatever, or finds a positive way to do it because the the, the fourth thing just not doing it is not an option for this person. And you and you buy that that's not an option for him. Um, and you see him start to care about other people and become more of a more of a real feeling human being. Um, and then uh, how that compromises his ability to do his killing. I, don't know, I think the whole thing is absolutely fascinating. Um, there is definitely some um, sorry, there's definitely some stuff that's kind of hackneyed here and there. Um, like like because um, you know, it's an eight-season show. Like I said, I'm only three seasons through it. Um, it, it it's uh, it's a long show. It's one of those things that I've heard kind of um, kind of plays itself out and then keeps going because it was too popular. It, it, it's one yeah. of those shows which is really unfortunate. This does not seem like the kind of show that should be on for eight, for eight years. This seems like the kind of show that it ought to be like it ought to be like Breaking Bad, where it's on for like four or five years and then it has like a de like a definitive ending. You know what I mean? It's going to a place and then um, because this person can't do this forever. Surely at some point it gets caught, right? And like like I said, I've not been to the end of it, but I would have wanted to. I would want to see this show end that way, and I've heard it's. People have told me, and I, I, haven't, I haven't watched it, so I don't know yet. But, 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 um, but people have told me that it's one of the most disappointing finales ever on television. Um, so I hope that's not actually true. But you know, I kind of got the feeling that's where I was going. That's why I only watched half of it. But, I'm uh, gonna finish it just because I love watching this guy act. Uh, that, that's a lot of it. Um, I, I completely agree. And one of the things I like about him is yeah. that he's able to display like different levels of emotion. Like uh, when they start comparing him to superheroes or vigilantes, yeah, I love that. there's like a little bit of pride that wells up in him. And but it's not super significant. It's just, wow, maybe maybe I'm not the terrible person I think I am. And uh, he starts caring for people, but he, he cares in his own way. Right. And that's what I think is so interesting about this guy's performance, is that not only can he do the extremes, but uh, he can do just a little bit above. He's incredibly subtle, but you always see stuff exactly. turning in his head. Terrific um, I didn't mention earlier, again, for folks that haven't seen the show, that um, that a part of the premise is he's a blood splatter analyst, and um, so so the way he's able to he's able to do his his um his job along with um, 
um, the serial killer thing is he uh, he goes to crime scenes and he finds out about people that are killers and then later on he goes and kills them and chops them up and throws them in the ocean. Um, and uh, I, I, all the stuff about <laughs> all the stuff about blood and and um, and the, you know the different layers of what blood means in different situations and and that kind of I don't know it's 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 all it's all really fast the writing is fantastic and um, one of the last things I, the last thing I want to mention is um the narration is great. Um, yeah. A lot of shows will try this, and a lot of movies will try this, and it will it will feel unnecessary. I don't know how you get into this guy's head without that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, because he doesn't convey... Um, you can never be sure just looking at him what emotions, uh, emotions he's conveying because he's so good at lying to people. He's so good at pretending. So for us to actually get to know him, we have to get in his mind and listen to him talking to himself. Every once in a while it says, like, like he'll say something to somebody and then he'll say, like, that's a lie, right? I love that stuff. I yeah. think that's really interesting. Um, the narration in the show is as good or maybe even a little better even than um, House of Cards, which is another show that I think does, oh, yeah. does, the, does the running narration uh, I think you would enjoy that show. Um, it d does does the running narration um, that way, where uh, where you're getting into the head of a master manipulator um, as he is manipulating people and then telling you what he really thinks about stuff. Uh, I think that's great. The word that sounds neat. The word choice in this show. It's 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 one of the reasons Dexter I watch it. In, in Dexter. Um, it, well, House Cards too, but 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 De but Dexter especially. Uh, boy, the boy, the word choice, just like the like the way he phrases things, I find absolutely fascinating. Um, and uh, and 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 kind of infectious. Like I like this is one of the shows that I watch and I go, ooh, I wish I could write like that, you know. And any show that makes me think that that, that you know, sparks my imagination to go, oh, I didn't, I would have never thought to, to to put that sentiment together in quite that way. Um, as as a writer, that thing gets me. Very excited. Um, so anyway, I, I I recommend that show to anybody, and um, I would say uh, you know the first two seasons are really 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 great. I don't want to give away anything about where they go and stuff, except to say that the second season is really really fun because um, Dexter is his own big bad. Um, watch the show if no other reason for no other, no other reason than to get through season two because um, because uh, he he's he's helping the police department um, find well he's not one he's not actually helping them but he's pretending to help the police department find him like like he as the serial killer is the big bad for that season. Boy, that's cool. Um, Every, so anyway, when I saw that, I couldn't stop thinking about a Woody Allen movie that I watched, Curse oh, yeah? of the Jade Scorpion, where at some point Woody Allen says uh, he, he's like mesmerized into where he's committing certain crimes, but he's he's trying to solve these crimes that he's committing. So at some oh, that's point, fun. it's it's really quirky and interesting. Well, speaking of a house of cards, that's gonna fall apart, right? <laughs> Indeed. And at some point, he says, uh, "You know, I'd, I'd really hate to have me on my case." <laughs> <laughs> So, during that season, every so often, I'd think of that movie and go... <laughs> Well, right, I think this is all, for, as always for watching us recommend things. I know this was a uh, longer recommend than usual, but um, I had a thing that you know takes a little longer to talk about and stuff. Yeah, and I um, spoke at length about Ghostbusters, so it is what it is. Well, anyway, uh, we'll see you next week to re recommend something else for you. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. See you later. <laughs>